What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Right Now Powder Coating Channel. In today's video, we are gonna go over the Electron Plus 3 Master Unit. We're gonna show you guys some of the cheat codes, if you will, on how to set up recipes, favorite settings on the gun, and other things that a lot of you guys ask us about. So let's get into it. All right, so I am here with my business partner at CTSA, Ray. And he's gonna go through some of the settings on the gun, setting up recipes, resets, and maybe some other stuff that will actually help you guys after you buy one of these guns or if you currently own one. All right, Ray, so the first thing we wanna do is perhaps set up a recipe. If we're spraying the same part over and over with the same powder, it's always a good idea to have a recipe. Can you show us what we would do on here to get that recipe set up? Yeah, sure, thanks, Dan, great to be here. All right, just remember that uh, one, two, three, and four are for the factory preset settings. So we're gonna look at anything from five onwards. So five right up to 50, we can program ourselves. So today I'm going to just make up any program that I wish. So I'll just select just a random value. So we're gonna set all this up before we select the recipe Correct. number. Okay. Correct, so you'll set up your KV microamps, your percentage and your total flow. You'll select that. Let's just say that this is the program that I'd like to save for myself. You click on the program button. You're gonna click and hold until Correct. it flashes. Correct. We'll then choose 10, and hold then... it in until it flashes fast, and that'll be your number 10. So we wanna just go back to any one of the program settings. Let's go number one. And now you wanna go to your setting that you've just done, your program that you've just done. We'll go up to number 10 where we were. And there's our setting. Let's go through all of our settings here. And maybe let's just talk about what the bottom buttons are, including the boost button. And then let's maybe go over some of the settings. Like let's explain exactly what the percentage and the total, what these numbers are and how they correlate to what's happening with the pump and the powder, if you would. Okay, we can do that. Let's start off with the, the four presets, the factory presets. Firstly, you have flat sheet, which is recommended by the factory. This is not something that you have to stick to. It's just a recommendation. You can then, for argument's sake, if you wanted to use the setting, but you wanted to increase the powder percentage, you could now go in and make your own program the way we've just Manually. showed you. So these are just recommended settings by the factory. You have your flat sheet, you have your recoat, you have your Faraday cage, high Faraday cage, complex parts, and then you have the boost button. Boost button gives you maximum KV, maximum microamps, maximum, and then a very high selection of powder. And you're gonna have a really good transfer efficiency in this setting, so usually you're gonna use something like this on a flat part. All right, so when it comes to your air settings on here, this is all gonna be factory set. Um, and what I like to kind of tell people is, these presets are going to adjust your KV and your UA. So you can see on a recoat, they've got it pretty low there. Um, and on a Faraday, it's a little bit higher. But it's going to automatically change your numbers here. The 4.0, that's your total air that's coming to both of these lines. And then the 60% is the amount going to the red one, which will create the vacuum for the powder. And then the supplemental air of 40% would be going to your black as supplemental air to help carry the powder out. Ray, what do you think is a good starting point on these guns for new guys? If you're doing a demo, where would we set these numbers up at? To start off with, I like to go on a 3.8 uh, and around 50%, which will give you 50% atomizing air or diluting air. And then we can increase the amount of powder. It's a mathematical subtraction. So if you go up to 60%, you 60% powder, 60% on the red line, 40% uh, on the atomizing air, and you increase it slowly to get a good cloud. Yep, so what I like to do personally is get my cloud adjusted the way I like it, and what I'll do is I'll pull the trigger against the booth and look at the cloud as it comes out, and then if I feel like it's super slow or it's having trouble getting the powder up, we'll come back up here to this total air and we'll give it a little bit more. And you can go in pretty small increments on here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, go back, pull that trigger, see what it does again. That's how I like to do it. Yeah. So this is a pretty high setting typically if you're in a production type environment. A lot of guys that are coming into these electrons like to run them actually pretty low. So if you're one of those guys and you're doing small parts that don't need a lot of powder, I would maybe come down into this setting, 3.5 and 40, pull your trigger, see what the cloud looks like, and then work your way back up. The one thing I have noticed is that these put out a lot of power. So if you get these numbers really, really low, um, you're not gonna have enough 
of powder coming out of the gun to pick up that charge to go to the part. So you gotta be careful with that too. All right, so we're gonna go into the menu tab here in a second, but a lot of people, they'll get this gun in. The number one thing I get asked about is the vibration table, which this power button is what controls your vibration table and your fluidization air. We don't have air up to this gun, but Typically, if you're in the box style mode here, the multicolor mode, you're gonna have to pull the trigger for this to be activated, and then it's on a timer, so it's gonna shut off. So you pull the trigger, it's gonna vibrate, and you're gonna see a little bit of action down here on your valve. If you don't, you need to pull the trigger and then crank this up. This gun though, Ray, if you'll turn that on for me. It automatically started going without us pulling the trigger. So if this happens to you, Ray's gonna show you what you need to do. All right, so go into the menu mode. We do that by holding in the on-off button for the vibrator. We come up to the hopper mode here, which is incorrect. We need to be on the box feeder. So you're gonna click that top button. Yep. And then you're gonna adjust the dial to so switch So we, we go up and down through the menu with those two buttons. We're gonna move back to the multicolor and you can go out of the screen just by clicking on it again. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it back on. And you're gonna see that it's not vibrating until you pull the trigger. So, and you see it's on a timer, which can be adjusted as well, which we can show you right now. But if you get this in and it's vibrating like crazy and you're not using a hopper, you need to switch it over to multicolor. If you do have a hopper that you wanna use, feel free to switch it back to the hopper mode if you want it to fluidize the whole time. Basically your orange line here that goes into your pickup tube is gonna go into your hopper. You may need to do some adjustments based on your hopper to get this piece so that you can do a quick connect. Um, but the biggest thing I wanna tell you is when you switch back to that hopper before you turn the system on, get your air all the way down to zero because if you're using a small hopper, you're gonna blow it up because it's probably too much air for your hopper. So show us on here when we wanna not have this vibrate for 30 seconds or whatever, it's how we set that up. Just uh, go back into the menu setting again by holding the on-off button. And we go down to auxiliary delay and we have a few delays that we can put in there. So the higher the number, the longer it's gonna stay yeah. on. Yep. So two isn't too bad, it's a couple seconds. If you're dropping the trigger a lot, waiting a couple seconds and coming back, you may want that a little bit higher just to keep your powder fluidizing. You don't want it to keep settling and creating mounds on it, but yeah, so you can adjust that right on there. All right, so there's also a couple different ways you can set up this screen. Ray, do you want to walk us through that? Yeah, we do have a few customers requesting a different type of display in terms of controlling powder and atomizing air. And the way to do that is go back onto your menu screen. And the way that I've done that is I've just held the on-off button in. We're then going to go all the way down to proportional and independent. Those are the two options for that display on powder control. So I'm going to go into independent now back out of the screen. And now we've taken it away from a proportional setting to independent. So now you can independently control your powder flow and your atomizing air, which is the black hose and the red hose. This is controlling it independently. So no longer are you doing a 40, 60% change. Yeah. You can actually increase that in tenths. Yes. So we can actually now control in tenths what the atomizing air is done independently from the powder flow. So on this one, if you want more powder, correct, you're gonna turn this up. Correct. If you want more air, you're gonna turn this up. Correct. Completely independent. All right, another cool feature on here is if you are tracking your wear items, such as your insert that's in the pump or your electrode or tip on here, you can actually hit this menu button twice and it's going to take you to a countdown so you can have a notebook somewhere that says timer number one is for my electrode timer number two is for the insert and timer number three is for say the flat tip and when they count down to zero you'll say okay timer three is at zero we need to replace that part and the more you use your unit the more you can kind of calculate what that is or if you're using it like on one color and you want to make sure that your guys clean it out really good after 20 hours of use you could use a timer for that too all right another nice feature about these guns that some people really like is that it has a purge function on the back of this gun you can actually see that ray walk us through how we can adjust the purge and what it does in the different settings. What I would first do is I'd go into the menu setting. Once you're in the menu setting, you can see the purge function six rows down. 
it's currently disabled so we're going to go in and switch it on enable a is automatic mode it will just randomly purge we keep it out of that mode it's not a good mode to be in no if you've got an automatic setup we can use that but right now this is a manual system so we're going to enable m which is the manual system we'll then go out of it and then we can we can purge the system by holding it in and obviously we don't have air to the gun right now so it's not going to go but you hold that p in you see that highlight and then it goes into fast purge and this is where it's going to be pushing air through the system to clear all the lines out. You can do that daily if you want, but I would not rely on that for a clean. If you're going to spray the same color the next day and just don't want stuff sitting in your lines, that's a good time to use it. Yeah, it's soft. It's not something you want to rely on for cleaning your system. What we would recommend, if you do want to use that as a pre-clean, you can do that. Pull the pickup tube out of your powder, fast purge it out, and then tear it apart and clean it out. You can also do the fast purge by not only going on the back of the gun, you can also do it on the controller by holding the menu button and it goes into the same purge feature. Nice, and of course it's gotta be turned on um, in this um, setting here. It's gotta be enabled. So the units do not come with that turned on. So Ray, another thing that I get a lot is people don't know what that piece is you're playing with. What is that? Basically what it does is once you have the box of powder onto the vibrating platform, you can adjust the height of the pickup tube. And this has got a locking nut. You can adjust the height of the locking nut. So what's the benefit of being able to adjust that? What's it do for you? If the pickup tube is dropping too low into the box, it's going to suck the plastic bag into the yep. pickup tube. Can also rub a hole through it from the yeah, vibration. Absolutely. The thing I've noticed personally is you can actually create voids in the powder. When you are clear down there, you'll create like a little rat hole, I guess. And then the powder will go away. And then all of a sudden the powder will fall in there and it'll suck it up and throw a bunch out at you. It's good to kind of bring that down with your powder as you're using it. But yeah, that's... A really nice feature that they've added for this model. All right, guys, I hope that all those tips and tricks that me and Ray went over with you guys help you out if you have one of these guns. If you don't, it is not too late. Again, they are the most affordable, professional, top grade gun on the market. And I stand by that. Check out our website, ctsainc.com. We have our guns on there. We've got our spare parts and we're adding more daily. We have also just added a stripping chemical. It's called Eco Strip. You can get it in five, 35 and 55 gallons, as well as a mineral oil, which you put on top as a blanket, which will definitely help keep the smell in and make the chemical last longer so it doesn't evaporate. So check out the website. We're gonna be adding stuff constantly. We wanna be your one-stop shop for everything you guys need. Powder coating, so that we are slowly getting there. It takes time, it takes a lot of effort to build out. Make sure we're getting the best products for you guys. We have all the chemicals listed. They can ship now. It's usually a couple days shipping. And we have strip tanks on the way, so CTSA strip tanks will be on there. Again, I wanna thank Ray for joining me and helping you guys out on this. Make sure to check out our website. And until next time, get out there and coat something.